Hello Merced College, this is your friendly SLO coordinator. Today in this video I'm going to be showing you how to input data for SLO assessment using eLumen. So the first thing I want you to look at is, after you log into eLumen is whether or not it's you who's actually logged in. Then you are going to log in to your specific role. At our campus it's mostly the faculty that do SLO assessments. You also want to identify the discipline within which you're going to be working. I only teach courses within biology, so that's my only option. But other people who have uh, additional disciplines that they work within, make sure you've selected the appropriate discipline. You also want to come and select the appropriate semester within which you're doing an SLO assessment. Right now we are doing assessments for fall 2018. Within this page you'll see that you have all the courses that you're teaching that given semester. Within this page, you'll also find student rosters. You can push this button to identify the class roster. You can copy and paste out of this roster into an Excel spreadsheet so that you have a hard copy of your roster. So down here in the Bio 9 section, you'll see that we have activity names and descriptions. Activity 9 SLO assessment is the name and the description for this particular activity. And you'll see that I have this for both Bio 9 and Bio 32. Bio 32L does not have an assessment associated with it because this particular course does not, have, does not require assessment at this time. So, in order to enter SLO data, you're going to be using student scorecards, not the import scores. I like this one on the right, so this is the one I'm going to show you first. So this is the uh, SLO input page for your SLO assessment. What you're going to see here is a row uh, identifying your students by name. If you hover the student over the student's name, you'll see the student ID number all the way down the list. You'll also see an alphabetical listing of SLOs. You'll notice that both students and SLO listings are alphabetical order. What you're going to be doing is determining or entering whether or not each student met expectations for that SLO or did not meet expectations or perhaps that student didn't turn in the assignment linked to your given SLO. So for this student I'm going to say that she met expectations for SLO 1, she did not meet expectations for SLO 2, and then for SLO 3 for whatever reason I was not able to do an SLO assessment. So I put NA in the list here. It's very important to put NA down on your SLO assessment if the student is on your roster because this helps keep the uh, assessment machinery working correctly and the math works out right. Over here in assessment comments, you'll see that I have done uh, a little bit of commentary before in November on November 14th and today, earlier today, on November 28th. This section can be used to make comments on your students' uh, SLO performance. Uh, you may also want to use this field for the first student to enter the assessment tool that you used for each SLO. As you come back to your SLO reports in subsequent semesters, this might be helpful to uh, guide you in how you do the SLO assessments. So after you enter assessment comments, you're going to push save and next, and that will roll you to the next student. So I'm going to say that this student uh, met expectations for SLOs 1 and 3 and not SLO 2. And then I'm going to save and go to next. You'll see that I already entered data for the third student. And in fact, for, for uh, this video, I already mocked up data for this whole course. So we go to the last student in line and we're going to save the data. We are not going to save and continue to reflections at this time. You're going to go to results explorer to look at the results of your SLO assessment. So you'll see that we have uh, this first section here for this SLO assessment. If there were multiple sections, you would be able to identify uh, each individual se uh, session, or sorry, section by clicking on the section, or you could say select all, so you can do a comparison among sections. On your graphical data or on the chart view, you'll see how each SLO performance measure met against each other SLO performance measure. If you hover over each bar, you're going to see a, a percentage in terms of how the students did for each SLO. When you come down to the second graph, uh, you're looking at the mastery level per SLO, whether they met expectations, 
or did not meet ex expectations. So this is one way to look at the percentage of students that met expectations and the percentage that didn't. If you come over here to the table view, you will see how many students did not have SLO data listed for them for SLO2 in this case, and you will see how of the students that were assessed, what the proportion of students were that met expectations versus didn't meet expectations. You can also come down to this section called Faculty Reflections. Now it would be great if you could answer these reflections questions right here on this page, but we can't, unfortunately. So what I'm going to ask you to do is go back to your course list. You'll notice now that this student scorecard has a green check mark next to it. It means that that particular student scorecard is now completely filled out. Go to your scorecard, scroll down, select the last student on your list, and now save and continue to reflections. I've already mocked up the reflections with just some words. Uh, so, for example, what are the most significant findings in the data? Most students like cells. Then I just filled in some other just kind of silly things here so that I have information to share. You can submit and share your, uh, uh, your SLO assessment answers here, or you can submit and share anonymously. What this does is it strips away the section in which you entered the data for. That can be a good or a bad thing depending on how you decide to share data within the course. I'm going to say Submit and Share. I'm going to go back to the Results Explorer again. I'm going to go to the Table View. Now you'll see the answers to each of these individual questions. Um, what you're going to be looking at are the answers, uh, and I've highlighted which answers might be important for my program review, which will be showing these answers when the program review module is ready to go. In the future, you will also be seeing uh, additional information as the semesters go by. If particular uh, courses have numerous sections, the answers to each of these questions will also be listed. You can look at the answers by respondent or by question. So what you would see here is the first question, and you'll see my answer to that particular question, which right now doesn't mean anything, but in the future, as I fill out the true data that will reflect, Things like, this will help you on your program review. After you do this, you may go and print your information. You can print it or you can save it as a Microsoft PDF. And that will save on your computer and you can identify where you want to save it to. So I would put it like in my documents or wherever within my, um, within my program uh, navigation bar. So that's basically how to do a course SLO assessment within eLumen. I would then move on to the next course and enter data there. The last thing I'm going to show you is the other scorecard. If you wanted to enter data without putting in any course comments, you would just identify the first student. If you hover over the name here, you're not going to get the student ID. But here are the three SLOs, and you can say whether or not they met expectations or they didn't answer the question or turn in the assignment. 